The Greatest Mercs, Part 3. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, enabling you to understand more about the behaviours of narcissists by conveying my expertise, my worldview, and unravelling the way that others of my kind behave. And we continue by looking at the behaviour of Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, as he is interviewed back when he was Mayor of London. Not only do we see a range of behaviours exhibited by him, but we are also able to see how he functions with regard to the presentation of his smirk. Let's dive straight back into the footage. Let me ask you about some of the things that came up in the documentary. Right. Well, I haven't, the, I haven't seen it, so... You, no, but, but, but this happened in your life, so you, you know about this. The Times theory. let you go after you made up a quote. Why did you make up a quote? Well, uh, this, this, again, you know... These are these are these are big terms for what happened. Why well, I can tell you the whole thing. I mean, it was, it, 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 I think our, you know, I think, you, you're you sure our viewers wouldn't want to hear more about well, housing. Right. If, you don't, if, you about, about, if you don't want to talk, if you don't want to talk about the made-up quote, it was, a, it was, a, it was a long, a long and lamentable story. Okay, but you made uh, a quote. Which, up. Well, uh, halting the original footage on thirty-five seconds. What do we see in this segment? Eddie Mayer wants to ask Boris Johnson about certain things that are coming up in a documentary. And the documentary was something that had been filmed by Michael Cockerell. And it was a documentary about Johnson. The purpose of it was to bring certain matters that had occurred in the documentary to get Boris Johnson's response to them. So... Mayor says he wants to ask Boris Johnson about certain things that come up in the documentary. Boris Johnson gives an affirmative right and then looks disinterested and then states, I haven't seen it. This is deflection. He's suggesting it's pointless to ask him because he's not seen it. He's dismissive, arrogant. And what he's trying to do is shut it down before it goes anywhere to damage the credibility of the questions. Eddie Mayer isn't put off. He states, this happened in your life, so you know about it. He issues challenge fuel towards Boris Johnson. Notice the dismissiveness on Boris Johnson's face, and he then says, in theory. This is a sophisticated denial. You say, I might know about this, but actually I may not. He's looking to split hairs, and in so doing, is demonstrative of his status. Eddie Mayer states, The, time, the Times newspaper let you go after you made up a quote. This is challenge fuel. Mayor's response, his interaction, provides fuel to Johnson, but suggesting that he's done something wrong challenges that innate need for control that Johnson has, suggesting that he is not a good person, that he's a liar, that he'd made something up, attacking his integrity. Boris Johnson immediately responds, of course, by deploying bumbling Boris, which is part of his facade. I've explained previously, and it bears repeating, that you should not be taken in by this. Boris is far from bumbling. There is a sharp mind behind that mess of blonde hair. This is a carefully calculated facade which is done to make him seem like he's an everyman, that he's friend to all, and there's nothing to be frightened of here, that he is just getting along and he's a jolly chap and it's jolly hockey sticks and we'll have a game of whiff waff and so forth and it's all jolly japes and of course this is basically dis to disorientate people to cause them to think oh i'm not dealing with some predatory mind here i'm dealing with a bit of a clown but this is what johnson has thrived on and he's utilized this facade throughout the entirety of his career and life In response to this assertion that he made up a quote, he snorts in derision, smiles and looks away. His contempt for this is palpable. Eddie Mayer presses on. Why did you make up a quote? This, again, is challenge fuel. There are big terms for what happened, begins Johnson. I can tell you the whole thing, mumble, mumble. Are you sure our viewers wouldn't want to hear more about housing in London. Notice when he talks about our viewers that there's the extension of 
the viewers belonging to him. It's almost a form of asset appropriation because the viewers are of the show and don't actually belong to him. After all, if Andrew Marr was sat there, they're his viewers. They're watching his show. And therefore, in effect, with Mayor sitting in for Marr, he is the person that has the viewers, not Johnson. But that's not going to slow jo Johnson down from appropriating those viewers. They belong to him because he sees them as his people. He, of course, he looks to deflect. And he trivialises the subject by basically saying, we don't need to talk about me making things up. We don't need to talk about the fact that I might be a liar. We don't need to talk about any of those things. Let's focus on what talking about housing, because that's what I want to talk about. He then adds, it was a long and landable story. He's still not getting to the point. He's deploying the bumbling Boris facade to slow it down, to deflect, to escape the attempt to make him accountable and thus nullify the threat to control. Eddie Mayer is not to be dissuaded, however. He adds, but you made it all up, issuing another dose of challenge fuel. Throughout this exchange already, you can see the look on Boris Johnson's face where it's almost, I can't believe I'm sat here listening to this, this is quite funny, this isn't going to affect me, listen to him going on, I could crush him if I wanted to, but I'll just sit here, soak it up, dole out bumbling Boris and be done with it, it won't go on for long. And this is the kind of arrogance and calculating mind that's exhibited by Johnson. He knows precisely what he's doing. He knows that he just needs to bide his time. There's only a certain amount of time allocated for the interview. He's not getting riled. He's not losing his temper. He's not sitting and sulking. He's just carrying on. And he finds the whole thing laughable. We will see more of this, but also as more things that are put to him in part two. Join me there.